Hello everyone and thanks for joining us uh, for this short presentation that discusses targeted worming, which basically is an approach that we're now recommending um, that will maximise the efficacy of the wormers you use um, and also preserving the health of your horse. So the first question is why should we bother with using a targeted worming programme? And in fact, what is a targeted worming programme? The first thing to think about is that actually this has been quite a change in how we worm horses. So historically, we have wormed all horses as if they're all the same. We've used wormers quite frequently, so every two to three months, and we've used the same wormer for a year or two, then we've changed wormers. We felt that was the best approach um, to maximise the health of the horse. Um, that has really changed, and the main reasons that it has changed is that although it was very effective in preventing disease caused by a particular parasite called Strongylus vulgaris, unfortunately it's had the side effect that the drugs we use are becoming less and less effective. The more you use a wormer, the less effective it will become because resistance develops in the parasites, very similar to antibiotic resistance. So instead of that frequent worming for all horses on the yard, what we're now suggesting as the best practice to maximise your horse's health and also maintain the e efficacy of the wormers that we do have available is a so-called targeted worming program. Basically, a targeted worming program identifies the horses that do need worming using diagnostic tests, um, which means that you can then worm only those horses and not the horses that don't need worming. Again, similar to a horse um, that, for example, has pneumonia. You would want to treat that horse for its pneumonia, but you wouldn't treat the entire barn just because they share a barn. So the diagnostic tests that we use for a targeted worming program are the uh, faecal worm egg counts or worm egg counts um, and a saliva test, which we use to identify the presence of tapeworm. There's a couple of facts that are um, useful for you to know when um, you're working with your vet to design one of these targeted worming programs. The first thing is um, that even though you might treat all horses exactly the same from a management point of view, only a few of them will actually have um, sufficient worm burdens that mean that they need to be wormed. So probably only one or two horses in 10 and we're talking about adult horses here, will need worming. Um, and there's an old saying that 80% of the worms occur in 20% of the horses. And that really means that we can utilise wormers only in those horses that require them. So if we work out the maths, that means that four out of every five wormers are probably given unnecessarily. They don't really hurt your horse, but they're not helping the general health of the horse population because they are promoting resistance. So if you think of four out of five wormers being given unnecessarily, even if you factor in the necessity to test to see whether your horse needs treatment or not, actually targeted worming can save money. The other thing to think about is we sort of have this idea that you must get rid of all parasites because they're bad and they will kill the horse, but that's, that's just not true. So horses and parasites have lived for centuries and longer together. Um, and death from parasite disease is very, very uncommon. So in small numbers, um, parasites are not a problem for the horse. And in fact, they may actually help with the immune system. As I've already alluded to, we don't want to give too many wormers because overworming, so given frequent wormers when it's not necessary, can cause those wormers to become ineffective. And that's a situation that we're already in. So resistance to wormers, unfortunately, is widespread and we have very few drugs that are effective at all times. So we really need to use the ones that we have available appropriately. Um, the other thing, too, obviously, is that um, a wormer that's given to your horse, some of that drug will end up in the droppings um, and that can potentially be damaging to the environment. So there's lots of really good reasons to minimise the use of wormers and we can do that by using a targeted worm programme. So what are we actually trying to achieve when we're designing um, a parasite control programme? 
So clearly, we want to make sure that the risk of disease caused by parasites in your horse is minimised. We want to decrease the so-called infection pressure, and that basically means we want to limit the chances that your horse will pick up parasites. A lot of that comes down to pasture management. We want to try and maintain and prolong the effectiveness of the existing anthelmintics or wormers that we have available. There's only four real drug classes available. Um, drug companies aren't interested um, in producing more classes of drugs. So what we have is all we have. So we really need to make sure we um, are able to use those longer term. And as I said already, parasites in low numbers are really not damaging to your horse's health. So they don't need to be eradicated completely. So that is not a goal of parasite control. So we've talked about this targeted worming program. So we're targeting the horses that need to be treated. And in most situations where you have adult horses that are on um, good management, so they're not in overcrowded fields, you poo pick um, and not mixed with um, foals and weanlings, then effectively we need to do some worm egg counts, which will assess the worm burden in general throughout the grazing season. Um, and that's usually sort of spring to late autumn in the UK. Um, and then as needed, we use so-called strategic doses of wormer when that's appropriate. So really those egg counts are basically being used to identify which horses need to be treated. And we have a cutoff threshold of 200 eggs per gram. And that's identified when you submit your egg count um, and it's looked at under the microscope. If your horse has an egg count above 200 eggs per gram, doesn't mean you've done the, be the wrong thing by your horse. Um, it just means that your horse may be one of those ones that is the 20% of horses with 80% of the worms. Um, so if that's the case, um, then your vet will be able to advise you which is the most appropriate wormer um, for your horse. If, however, your, um, the horse's egg count is below 200 eggs per gram, you don't need to do anything. So no treatments required. You need to keep doing your good management um, and then repeat the egg count so that you do a total of about three or four egg counts across the grazing season. So February to November. One of the most important things in doing this targeted um, program is that we need to be able to have that egg count as accurate as possible. And like any diagnostic test, um, the, the efficacy or the accuracy of that test starts at the collection stage. So we need to make sure that the sample that you submit to us for testing is representative of the eggs in the pile of, of droppings. So you can't just grab one little fecal ball and that'll do um, because the eggs can be distributed unevenly through the pile of droppings. So first things, we want a sample from fresh, fresh feces. It doesn't have to be the minute it was passed, but you don't want it sitting out on a sort of warm day um, for two or three days. So fresh sample as possible. Um, use a freezer bag or some other sort of collection, um, and you want to get a large sort of pinch um, from three separate areas within the pile of droppings. Um, and you're aiming for about a total volume of the size of a golf ball. Please don't send in three separate um, fecal balls. It just means that we then have to do that at the lab. And if we're processing tens and twenties, 30, 40, 50 of these in a day, um, it's much easier if you've done some of the work already for us. Um, the next thing you want to do is expel the air from the bag, seal it up. Um, and if you can't take it straight to the clinic, um, then just pop it in the fridge, make sure it's well labelled um, or a cool place um, and then deliver to the clinic ideally within about 24 hours. Um, it would be brilliant to be able to um, test all of the horses on the yard um, at the same time. Not always possible, but that would be that would be ideal. And then we can um, treat those horses that need to be treated and manage the horse as one big herd. So this is the best test um, that we have for identifying adult worms that are producing eggs, because it's only the adults that produce those eggs. But there are some limitations um, of the um, egg count. The first one is that it can't be used to detect tapeworm, because tapeworm have a slightly different life cycle to the types of worms that we're identifying with the egg count. 
Um, the good news is that we can actually do a saliva test to identify tapeworm. And what we're testing for in the saliva test is the body's reaction to having tapeworms present. Um, and we can do that usually once a year um, to determine whether your horse needs to be treated or not for tapeworm. And that's something that you are able to do yourselves. The next limitation of the egg count is that it won't test for immature forms of redworms. Um, and these are the so-called encysted or larval um, redworms or cyathostomes. Um, so these are an important type of worm that we need to address in our worming program. Um, and so what we tend to do is recommend once a year that we specifically give a, a wormer that will kill those encysted or juvenile forms that live in the wall of the intestine. In most cases, that will be um, a product that contains moxidectin. Um, in some situations, we can do a five day course of fenbendazole, um, but unfortunately that is becoming less and less effective. So unless we know that Panicure works on your yard, we wouldn't necessarily recommend that for this specific wormer. Um, there is also now a blood test that's available that can detect the small red worm um, antibodies, so the body's reaction to the small red worm. And it's hoped that we'll be able to utilize this as an added diagnostic test, um, even better if they develop into a saliva test. Um, and that might mean that we might actually never need to treat um, a horse with, with worms if all of the tests come back negative. At the moment, um, we still recommend that probably once a year, um, we do that strategic worming treatment on all horses. Um, something else that um, can't be picked up by a, a worm egg count is pinworms. They don't really cause any disease in the horse. They just cause their backsides to be really itchy um, because the female pinworms lay their eggs around the um, anus and the rectum um, and it's a sticky film and that seems to be very itchy um, for horses so they'll often rub their tail. Um, so you can't pick that up on a, um, an egg count. Um, you can use a sellotape test or your vet can use a sellotape test which basically is exactly what it um, sounds like. So you get a piece of sellotape um, and you press it around the horse's anus and then you can see um, any of the eggs um, that are there. Um, as I said, it's not really a problem for the horse unless they become really itchy. Um, and the best way to actually stop the itch is to make sure um, that area, so around the, the tail base and the, and the rectum is cleaned. So wash it twice daily and that removes the eggs. Um, and that's also really important because if you don't do that, then the environment that the horse is living in becomes contaminated and that perpetuates the cycle. So um, they can certainly have a wormer if necessary, um, but um, cleanliness is really key. So we've talked a little bit about wormer resistance. Um, so wormers are more correctly termed anthelmintic. Um, and resistance to a wormer occurs um, when a high proportion of the parasites, which historically would have been killed by that wormer, are no longer killed by the particular wormer. Um, and we know um, that that occurs um, or has been detected in all four classes of wormers um, that are currently available on the market. Um, unfortunately, once we identify resistance, um, it's almost impossible to remove that. It's a genetic thing that the, the, the worms develop. So what's led us to the point where we're really worried about anthelmintic resistance? Well, if we think back to the very beginning, we were discussing about how we used to worm horses. So we used to worm them pretty frequently um, so that we could make sure that there weren't going to be any parasites that could cause disease. And unfortunately, what that means is that um, worms that will be killed by the wormer are killed off. Um, therefore, they don't make any eggs, um, but they leave behind the worms that are genetically resistant to survive and usually that's only a very small proportion but if you kill off the ones that um, are susceptible then you're only left with the resistant parasites and then those resistance parasites go on to breed with other resistant parasites and then their offspring are resistant so it becomes this sort of self-perpetuating cycle. 
So overuse of the anthel lintex is, is the key point. It might con be contributing um, to resistance if um, the horses are in particular underdosed, um, because that means that partially resistant worms um, might, might survive um, and then they can go on to breed with resistance, resistant worms. So it's really important to try and as accurately as possible um, work out the weight of your horse. Um, and this repeated use of wormers of the same type, um, so same particular class, means that you're actually selecting the same resistant parasites time and time again, and that might um, hasten the development of resistance to that wormer. Resistance is a little bit hard to work out whether you've got um, from the test that we've already described. There is a test called a fecal egg count reduction test, and that can be used to detect whether or not the resistance, resistance is present on your yard. It's very simple. It just um, requires two egg counts about two weeks apart in a group of horses um, that um, have had a wormer. So you do an egg count beforehand, you worm, and an egg count after, and you look at the decrease in the number of eggs over that period of time, and that can tell you whether your worm has been effective or not. So we need to use our wormers um, strategically um, and only when necessary, but almost as important and perhaps more important is that we need to try and minimize the chance that your horse will pick up um, worms in the first place and pasture management is really really key um, so if you can poo pick at least twice weekly um, and possibly um, a little more frequently if you can then basically you're removing the eggs from the pasture and the eggs can then no longer develop into larvae which can then no longer um, infect the horse. So you're breaking the cycle. You also don't want to spread manure because all you're doing then is just spreading those eggs over a much larger area and the horses then really can't avoid um, ingesting those um, eggs or larvae. On the same note, you want to try and minimise overstocking and overgrazing because the more stock in a field and the more overgrazed it is, the more chance those horses will have of picking up parasites. Horses don't like to graze around piles of feces, but if there's nowhere else for them to graze, they will, and that increases the chance of them picking up parasites. Something else that can be utilized, although is not usually that helpful for most yards, is that you could potentially rotate the pasture with sheep or cattle, um, or rest the pastures regularly. Something else that's a little bit um, foreign to a lot of people because we were always taught that you want to move your horse onto a clean pasture after you've wormed it is that we actually don't want to do this. So you don't want to put horses onto a clean pasture if you've wormed them within about two weeks previously. The reason for that is basically if you think about it, if you've treated your horse with a wormer and you've killed all the parasites that that wormer will kill, there's probably going to be a small proportion of parasites that are resistant to that wormer. And if you then put your horse onto a new, nice, clean field, the only parasites that are then going to make eggs that are going to contaminate the environment are resistant parasites. So now you have a field full of resistant parasites, and that's all your horse will then pick up. So you really don't want to dose and move. The next thing you want to do, obviously, is muck out stables regularly. And this is really important um, when there are foals and weanlings. We all know that foals like to eat um, poo um, and um, the parasites will be potentially in a fairly concentrated area. So muck out frequently. Um, and if you are in a, a breeding program, um, you want to think about possibly treating theirs um, with an ivermectin wormer prior to foaling. So hopefully um, this has made um, some sense of what we call targeted worming program. So just to summarize, we want to use re regular worm egg counts in conjunction with strategic worming. So worming when we believe it's appropriate and that can minimize the use of routine wormers. It'll keep your horse healthy and it will reduce the risk of resistance developing. If we're worried about a wormer not being particularly effective, so maybe you've got a high number um, of high egg counts, um, then it might be appropriate to have a chat with your vet about doing a fecal egg count reduction test, and that will determine which wormer 
um, might be effective on your yard. Um, but the good news is that if you have a well-managed horse that have low egg counts, you should really only require one strategic treatment against the small red worms a year. And possibly um, if a test for tapeworm is positive, one of those once a year as well. This is really only relevant for adult horses over about two or three years of age. Um, youngsters are very different. They don't have the immunity um, that adult horses have to a lot of the parasites. Um, and we've got a separate webinar that you can watch um, on worming of youngsters. And remember, it's a, it's a team effort between you and your vet um, to try and come up with an appropriate and sensible targeted worming program for your horse or your yard. The Horse Health Programme is a competitively priced preventative healthcare plan which saves you money and spreads the cost throughout the year in equal monthly payments. It provides you with everything you need to help keep your horse fit and healthy and its many benefits include four faecal worm egg counts, an autumn tapeworm saliva test and an appropriate autumn wormer. The Horse Health Programme is only available from CVS Equine Veterinary Practices. To find a practice near you and to join, go to www.horsehealthprogram.co.uk.